Hey everybody, this is Joe with GeoVision back with another demo tutorial video. For today's video, I will be going over a basic overview of some of the most commonly used features in the GeoVision AS Web utility. AS Web is a web-based utility that allows users to view and administer their access control setup at their facility. Before I get into today's video, if you find the content on this channel useful, please consider subscribing to the channel and also giving the video a thumbs up. It really helps with the exposure of the channel. So again, for today's video, I will be looking at the AS Web web browser client that allows users to remotely make changes to the access control or just administer it uh, in the first place. So when you're in the AS Manager software, there are a few prep things that you need to do to be able to utilize the AS Web program. First, you will want to make sure you go into Tools and Servers, and you need to enable the Web Server. So once you click on this, you will get a window that will pop up here. And by default, this HTTP port will be set at 80, but you do have the ability to edit that and utilize whatever port you would like. Now, if you are going to be utilizing the AS Web program on the same internal network, like for example, if your PC is on the same network that the AS Manager machine is on, you will not have to do port forwarding to remotely access. But if you are going to be accessing AS Web on a remote PC that is outside of the network, then you will need to forward this port that you are going to enter into this field. You do also have the ability to add IP addresses that can or cannot remotely access the AS Web system. And to do that, you can just click the add here and you can choose either allow or deny, and then you can input those IP addresses. So once you hit okay, it will go ahead and turn on the service and you will see that down here in the right hand corner, there will be a web server logo that is a little globe there. Now, once you have got the web server set up and you have done your port forwarding if needed for rem uh, remote access, there are a couple ways that you can access AS Web. One way is if you're in AS Manager and you want to be able to access, you can just click right here where it says desktop and you can choose the AS Web or AS Web with SSL, which is an added layer of, of, of encryption. So I'm just gonna go ahead for this demo video and click on AS Web. And this will bring us into the AS Web utility here. Now, when you log in, it may not have these icons. It might just have four screens and one of them will say AS Web. If you click on it, it would ask you for your ID and password. And that would be the ID and password that you use to log into AS Manager. Now, if you are remotely accessing, you will want to um, use the URL field up here and you will want to type in the external IP address of the AS Manager machine if you're accessing from outside of the internal network or if you are on the same internal network that the AS Manager machine is on, you could type in the internal IP address of the AS Manager machine right here. Now, this is the basic uh, layout of the AS Web. There are several icons, as you see, and there are a lot of things that you can do within this uh, user interface. Uh, some of the first things that you can do right here are live video. So if you do have a GeoVision video management software integrated, you can actually click in here and you can choose which cameras you want to view just by going through your menu and selecting the camera that you want to view. Please note that in the web browser AS Web, you are going to be seeing the cameras at a lower resolution and a lower frame rate. Um, that's just the limitations of the AS Web program. But again, you are able to click through and see different live camera feeds if needed. Next, you can click on monitor. And this is where you can actually go in and you can see um, activity that has been going on at the facility. If, for example, you wanna click on access log, this will show you all of the times where people have presented a card to a reader. You'll get a message here, as well as which door, the date and timestamp. And then if you also have a GeoVision video system integrated, you can hover over the snapshot icon and you can see the snapshot, the thumbnail image from when someone presented a card to the reader. You also have the ability, if you're recording the video in a GeoVision VMS, to click this film strip icon and you can play back the full video associated with that card swipe. And of course, over here in the far right, you do have your card numbers that will display as well. 
you can scroll through here and you can look at your logs. If you have a license plate recognition set up, this is where you could also view LPR logs. This is for another video, but it is here if you ever want to explore that. Over on the left side of the screen, you'll see all of your controllers listed out. If you expand a controller, it'll show you your doors for that controller. And then you can right click on a door and you have the ability to control the lock state of that door. So for example, if the door is normally locked and I want to temporarily unlock it, I could hit unlock door. If I wanted to override a schedule, for example, um, let's say that our doors are meant to be locked all day long and maybe you have an event going on at your facility and you want to just hold that door unlocked for maybe an hour or two, for example, you could hit force unlock and it would put that door now in an unlock state until you go back in and click this disable door lock operation mode. The exact opposite here for force lock, Let's say, for example, your facility is scheduled to unlock every day at 8 a.m. and then relock at 5 p.m., but maybe something's going on and you need to secure your facility. You could hit force lock and that would lock the door and override your existing schedule. Now, a note about force lock is if you force lock the door, employees or residents access cards would still allow them to get through the door. And your last option that you have here is lockdown. So lockdown is basically the highest level of secure lockdown option. This would lock down the door. And if someone has a credential, it would not be able to get through the lockdown. They would not be able to present their card and unlock the door unless whenever you were setting up their credential, you checked the box that gives them access to go through a door in a lockdown state. Now, a couple other notes about controlling the doors here. You can control on a per door basis if you click on the door. You can click on a per controller basis, meaning you could say hit lockdown and it would lock down just the doors under that controller. Or up here, you can also click and you can do a facility wide lockdown or a facility wide force unlock if needed. So, for example, I'm going to go ahead and just hit force unlock. And you'll see that all of these doors are now in a force unlock state. And if you're ready to go back to a normal state, you can just right click, disable door lock operation, and you can see now it puts those all back in card mode. You can close out of this window and it will take you back to your different icons here. Card list, this allows you to go in and you can explore and see the cards that are administered in your system. And you can add new cards. This is a pretty easy step. If you just hit the plus sign there, you'll get a window that pops up. You can type in your card number right here and you can assign access groups down below. You can also right here, assign users. If you click the drop down and you hit assign a user, this is where if you have enrolled users into your database, you will see all of their names listed. And then you could just double click on one it would assign them to the new card that you are about to assign. So let's say, for example, if I just wanted to type in a generic card number, I can do that. And then I can come down here to my access group. And let's say I want to give them the warehouse staff. And now you can see it has administered the warehouse staff access group over here. Right here, this is what I was talking about earlier with the disable lock card or allow access during lockdown mode. Let's say, for example, this is a management employee and you wanted to give them the ability to get through a lockdown. You can check that and it would give them that ability. It's also good to know that you can do activation and deactivation dates right here. So, for example, if you wanted to give someone just temporary access, maybe you wanted to give them a week's worth of access, you could go in and just choose those date ranges and then their card would automatically deactivate after that time. Just make sure at the bottom of this screen that you do hit the OK and it would save all of your settings. Now you can also delete a card out of the system right here. If you just click on a card, you can hit delete and then it would delete that card out of the system. Exports are also possible. If you wanna hit the drop down right here, you do have the ability to export your data. For example, if you wanted to put all of this in an Excel file, you could do it or maybe a PDF and it would list all of your card numbers with your users. On the far left, you do have the ability to search. So for example, if you have a lot of cards in your system and maybe you wanted to search by a certain card number and just quickly locate it, um, you could type in that card number. 
and then you hit search and it's going to narrow down and just give you that one particular card. User list, you can also click here and this is where you can enter users into the system. So again, you can just go in and hit new and you'll get a window that pops up. You can just fill out all this information right here and you can get as detailed with this as you want. Um, you can change the display option from last first to if you click here, you can do first last. You can enter their birthday, their gender. You can click on these tabs up here, enter phone numbers, addresses. You can really put a lot of information in here, but that is totally optional. And then you do also have the ability when you're creating a user to go ahead and assign a card to that user right here. So if you click the drop down. Again, you can hit either add an existing card or add a new card. Add an existing card would come into play if you've already enrolled all of your cards into the system. For example, maybe you bought 100 cards and you got the Excel file that has all of the card numbers on it. You can actually import that into the database. And then when you click add existing cards, it's going to list all those card numbers. You could then just double click and it would assign that card number to the user that you're creating. Alternatively, when you click the drop down, you can hit add a new card. And we are back at the window that we were at previously where we can manually type in all of this data. Now over here, you can also assign a photo of a uh, user. Uh, this comes into play where every time they swipe their card at a reader, their photo would pop up in the access log. And if you have a GeoVision camera integrated, you will see a snapshot from the camera right next to the pre-enrolled headshot of that person. That gives you the ability to verify if the right person has come in the door. So you could click browse to search within Windows and find the photo of the person that you want to use. Or if you have a webcam, you could click that and just take a picture of the person. And then when you're done with this field, obviously just make sure to hit OK to save all of your data. Access log, this is where you can go in and you can look at all of your card swipe data for a particular date and time range. So over on the left, it has you a lot of opportunities here to click different fields and filter by different information. For example, let's say that we wanted to look at all of the card swipe activity from last month. I can click that, hit search, and if I have any data, it's going to give me all that data right here. If you have a camera system integrated, you will see here that it will give you the ability to show that snapshot image. And there's a lot of other data that you can search by on the left. For example, if you wanted to search um, access granted or maybe access denied events, you can do that. You can scroll down and you have the ability to search by a specific user right here. There's a ton of data that you can search. You hit the search button and it will give you those results. Once you have found all of your data that you're interested in, you do have the ability to also export that as a report. So you can click the drop down here, and there's several report options. As a quick tip, I will recommend using the PDF option. When you do this, if you do have cameras integrated, it will save not only the text data, but it will also save the image from the camera that took the snapshot when someone presented their card to the reader. So again, this just gives you more information and it shows you who actually presented the card and gained access to the facility. Now a note for you when hitting the PDF here, you'll see there is two options, all or this page. Where this comes into play is maybe you've done a large search where you have multiple pages of data. This could, particular, uh, this could say page one out of 20, for example. Maybe you're only interested with the first page of results, you could hit this page. Or if you want all of the data, you can hit all and then it would create a PDF of all of that data. You do also have the ability to search LPR logs. If you have license plate recognition cameras integrated into the AS Manager program, you can click LPR log. And again, this is pretty much the same as the access log that we just looked at. Over on the left, you can search by a lot of different data. Um, you can choose your date and time range that you want to search. For example, maybe we say last week, hit search. It gives us all of our plate recognition results right here. And then um, you do have the ability to export that data just like you did in the previous screen. 
Your event log allows you to go in and look at event activity. For example, if you want to see when doors have been held open, or maybe you want to see whenever someone has disabled the remote door lock operations, you do have the ability to look in here and you can see who actually performed that action. And you can also search that information on the left. So for example, if you wanted to search by a specific message like uh, forced open or tamper or duress or any of these messages here, you can choose them. And then of course you can choose your date period that you want to search. And of course you do have the ability to export this as, this as a report again. Alarm log is a very similar option. You can go in here and you can search by specific messages such as forced open, tamper, fire alarm, all of those. And again, you can export the data. This has been a basic overview of the AS Web and some of the main features that are utilized within AS Web. For further information on our product line, please check us out at www.geovision.com.tw/us. Thanks a lot for watching.